What's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Lucas. If you're new here, this is Craft Off-Road. It's comprised of Jeeps, building Jeeps, off-roading, wheeling, camping, all that good stuff. I'm most of the time joined by my dad. His name's Rod. We enjoy it. This is our passion. So we do it for fun and have a good time. Today we're going to be filming a little video about the Jeep, also known as Crute, which stands for Craft Brute. It's kind of a custom concoction that my dad and I made. Um, so here it is. I bought this in 2012. It's a 2002 Jeep Wrangler TJ, or it was, and now it's turned into this. And we're going to get into talking about some of the pros and cons, some things that I don't like or do like a lot. So here we go. All right, so a little bit of information first about the Jeep. It was a completely stock, or it wasn't completely stock. The frame was completely stock, and uh, it had a four-inch lift. A rough country long arm 37s and uh, we had jk rubicon dana 44s front and rear swapped into it before we cut it in half so cutting it in half involved a sawzall and a lot of metal blades and we chopped it right about here on the frame if you guys can kind of see where this line is right here from there we moved the entire rear of it back and we created a 24 inch piece of steel which is two and a half by four inches and that is what's gonna be or that's what created the frame for in between the two halves so some of you might be curious as to what the wheelbase is now a stock TJ is I believe 93 and adding 24 inches to that gives us about a 117 inch wheelbase so that's what we're sitting at right now and uh, it is a lot longer than a, a stock TJ but I enjoy it it looks good so now we're gonna get into the pros and cons the first pro is the drivability of it. It drives so much smoother. The longer wheelbase allows me to go down the highway. I'm not feeling every bump in that short wheelbase TJ that I was feeling before. Um, along with the long arms, of course, it is triangulated in the rear, which also helps a ton. I don't have a rear track bar anymore. Um, but yeah, first pro is drivability. It is so much smoother. I can go down the highway with one hand on the steering wheel or even no hands, I've tried it before. So in addition to the drivability on the street, drivability on the trails and off-road and on the rocks, I've only been driving this for a few months since it's been completed. It's not 100% completed as you still see some primer on there, but on the street, it drives amazing. And on the trails, I could not be happier. It is so stable. I have a much better wheelbase for getting over obstacles. Um, I, I am turtling a little bit on some of the bigger rocks and boulders, which, it's got a long wheelbase, so it's gonna it's bound to happen. But I absolutely love the longer wheelbase on the trails. I feel so much more stable than a short wheelbase TJ. So if you guys are thinking about stretching your TJ, please do it. You're gonna fall in love with your Jeep again on the trails. It is absolutely amazing. Pro number two, it has a bed now. So now I have a lot more room to put stuff. You guys don't see it now, but I have a bed rack from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. It is one of their universal bed racks, so it's definitely not made for this kind of build but it goes width and height that can adjust both ways but the bed gives me so much more versatility I can put gear in here I can put whatever I want and uh, that is by far probably the best thing about this conversion all right so moving on to the next set of pros you can tell from the front we really haven't done any modifications or as great of modifications as we did to the frame and the rear tub um, pretty much this was all untouched during the build, so nothing really happened there. But when we move around to the cab over here, you can see how much smaller it is. It comes about right behind the driver's seat, so there isn't much room. And that's kind of a pro to me because I don't have to give anyone rides. If you're used to a TJ, you have that back seat and you will be giving people rides in the back unless you take it out. But I just have my seat and my passenger seat, so all I really have to worry about is me and one other person. I'm not weighing down the back of my Jeep with two more in there. Two more pros to end the pro list. The first one is, and I think this is probably the best one, it does burnouts. So with as light it is, as it is back here, there is no weight besides this. And this doesn't really weigh that much. My dad and I can lift it off. Definitely isn't easy to lift off, but we can do it. But there really isn't weight back here unless I have my rooftop tent and bed rack and gear. That's a whole nother story. But it does burnouts. You can kind of tell it's a little smooth on the tires, but burnouts are fun. And with this poor little four liter in here, 
why not? Why not have fun with how torquey that thing is? All right, the final and last pro is gonna be the way it looks. To me, this is a pro and this is completely opinion based, but in my opinion, it's beautiful. I love the way it looks. There's nothing else like it on the road. Of course, I didn't do it for that, but it's just an addition to all the other pros that it comes with. I get looks by other TJ owners all the time because they're probably like, why the hell did you cut your Jeep in half? But you know what, you only have one life, so you gotta live it. All right, guys, now we're gonna start with the cons. I hope you guys enjoyed the list of pros. Of course, it is all kind of opinion-based, so remember that, but you can go ahead and make your comment down below on what you think of them. Or if you have any other suggestions for pros, list them down below, what you think. But for cons, the first one is loss of cabin space. It's, it's a lot smaller in there now, so I don't really have any room to put stuff besides like an EDC backpack or some of my camera gear and electronics. It's all I can really store back there, but yeah, I don't really have any more cabin space, so any space back there that we were able to kind of save is just a bonus for me. So in addition to that being so small in there, that is a weatherproof area. So I don't have to worry about stuff being uh, wet, getting dirt, dust, all that stuff on it. And uh, that kind of goes along with, now I have to put stuff in the bed. So now I have to worry about weatherproofing that stuff, which um, can be seen as a con because now you're buying stuff that is weatherproofed, dry bags, cases, stuff like that. But for me, that's fun. Um, but if you are concerned about stuff being out of the weather, out of the elements, then this probably isn't for you because you're gonna have a lot more storage. So everything is gonna have to go in the bed. All right, second con, lots of fabrication, more stuff to worry about. Um, I know my dad and I did it right. We took a lot of time to do research, get the right parts, have the right materials, but there is a lot more that you're gonna have to worry about. I probably shouldn't worry about it because I trust what we did and I trust our work. But uh, to me, that's a con because now I have a whole nother group of things that I have to worry about going wrong rather than having just a stock TJ frame. So of course, everything is welded more than it should be, but which should be a given. But there are a lot more welds, something I have to think about. Am I gonna crack a weld when I'm on a obstacle, things like that. So the fabrication side of things, um, as much fun as it is to build and create things, it is for me something else I need to worry about on the trails or if I'm driving across the country, that's something else I have to think about when I have something that is a completely custom build. All right, third and final con is gonna be weight, of course. I've gotten a lot of messages about this and comments too on social media, people asking me how much additional weight has been added to the build. I have not weighed it. I didn't, I've actually never weighed this Jeep. Um, I'd actually be really curious to weigh it. There's a moving company right down the road from me, so I could always bring it there and weigh it and see what it is. If you guys are interested in knowing, I can definitely do that. Um, but there's a lot more weight added. The JK Rubicon axles, of course, are heavier than the stock TJ ones. They're fully trussed. That's gonna add a lot of weight. Um, we've added a lot more steel. But you're pretty much adding another TJ tub to this. Um, steel for the reinforcements from frame to frame end. So yeah, weight is definitely something I've noticed. Of course, with the very powerful four liter we have in this Jeep, it is pushing with all its might this Jeep down the road. It is geared to 488s, which helps a ton, but good God, it is definitely heavy. And when I have a bed rack and a rooftop tent on here and it's fully loaded down, you can definitely feel it. You can see there is a little bit of a rake to it. And what that means is it sits higher in the rear than it does in the front. This kind of just happened. We didn't really plan to do this, but it actually helps a ton when I have a bed rack and rooftop tent and the Jeep kind of sits and levels out, which is actually really nice. I'm not sagging in the rear, um, which I'm really happy about, but weight is definitely a con. Three things I want to add to kind of the ending of this video. Why'd I do it? would I do it again and should you do it? Um, why'd I do it? That is a great question. I like building things. My dad and I have a passion for it, like I mentioned, and this was just a project. I've always been in love with the AEV brutes. I actually looked for a brute kit, but because a lot of them weren't produced and a lot of people put them to good use and actually converted their TJ, 
They're not easy to find. I've heard rumors of a few of them being around, but uh, I just couldn't get my hands on them. And if they did want to sell them, they would probably cost me a pretty penny. And uh, my dad and I doing all of this ourselves saved a ton of money, which definitely helps in the long run. Because um, I know if I paid a shop to do this, I probably would be living out of this Jeep. Would I do it again? Absolutely. This was so much fun. Like I keep saying, my dad and I have fun doing this. As much work and literal blood, sweat, and tears going into these projects, it may feel like a pain in the butt, but I would 100% do it again. I want to do it again. Not to a TJ, I want to do it to a YJ. Um, I love YJs. I feel like they're going to be even easier to work on. Leaf spring, just we can talk about that in another video, but yeah. Would I do it again? 100%. Lastly, should you do it? Yes, of course I'm gonna say yes. Why not do it? Of course there's a lot that goes into making one of these. I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am. My dad and I, I've learned so much from my dad and my uncles. They grew up building vehicles, so this is kind of like second nature to them. Um, of course, we have the facility to do it. We have a lift, we have the right tools. So that's something you definitely should consider if you're gonna do it. But if you're not afraid and you wanna tackle it, then 100% go forth and prosper. Go forth and prosper and please do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little pro and con list and uh, I had fun doing it. I had fun coming up with some of these things. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to put them in the comment section or go on my Instagram, which is just craft underscore off road and you can message me, DM me on there. I'm happy to answer you. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video.